Hi, in this video we will see on a real example how to transform query to a function and apply that function to a similar table. First, let's observe the Excel table that we'll use to create our function upon. So let's enter our January table. As we can see, we will need to remove top rows, we'll need to fill down something, they will also need to filter out totals, and we will need to use the um pivot to get those uh, categories into a single column. And if we end, if we open the February file, we can see that the structure is pretty much the same. Uh, the only thing is that this is for the February data. Okay. So now let's open Power BI file and let's connect to the first source. So let's go to materials and let's connect to January data. We'll connect to sheet two and let's go to transform. First, let's remove these two applied steps. And now we need to remove first row. Uh, then we need to promote headers, we'll delete the change type, and then we need to fill this down, we need to filter out total, does not contain total, and we need to unpivot other columns and this will be segment and this is a value and we can change this to a decimal and change all these other columns with a single step right click change type to a text okay so now we have completed our script based on january sales we know for a fact that the following month February will have the same data structure as January. Therefore, we can transform the January query to a function and use it to transform February data in just one step. First, let's duplicate the query. This is so that we have a backup in case we mess something up. So let's duplicate it. We will create a function out of this query. So let's call this query, let's call it fx fx clean that will be the name of the function and now let's go to advanced editor this is where all the m code of our script is written first we need to set the argument or variable or object that will enter our function now we know that we define a variable or, or, or an object that will enter a function with the, with, within the round brackets. And we need to define the variable. Let's call it input table. We will say that this, this is of type table. This is just to let uh, the Power Query know uh, what will be the argument, uh, what will be the, the argument type of the data that will enter a function. Uh, this is not a necessary step, but it is the best practice to follow. And we need to, in order to make this, uh, pr th this parameter enter a function, we need to add an equal and a larger sign. And now we stated with this syntax that we have a c one variable, which is called input table, that is of a table type that will enter our function. In case we have multiple variables, we can split them with a comma. So in case we have another variable, variable let's call it this one, uh, date as date time. Um, let's call it as a date. So now we have two functions, uh, two variables that will enter a function. So we have an input table that is of type of table and we have a date variable that is of type of date but since we will not be using this variable let's leave it only as input table now we have to decide where we want our variable to enter function 
This can be confusing at the start since there are so many words and steps and we are unsure where exactly should our function start. We can simplify this by looking at the names of the applied steps and see if the values they reference are something that should remain stable or will change with different inputs. So for, exa for example, the saw step, we can see that it is referencing the Excel file named January sales. We know for a fact that we will receive a new February Excel, so this step of the query will definitely change. Therefore, it is not stable and needs to be removed from the function. So let's remove this step. The next step is named Sheet2 step. This is actually an Excel navigation step. We cannot be sure that the sheet name will always be Sheet2, so we will also delete this step. The next step is the removed top row step. We know for a fact that each Excel will have the same structure as January 1, Therefore, we will need to remove the first row from the table that, we, that the function receives. That means that from this step onwards, the script will do the same transformation steps to whatever table we provide as the input variable. So we need to rename the sheet to sheet step to the name of the input variable, which is the input table. So instead of sheet to sheet, we will say that it will become anything that is supplied as an input table from the top of the argument. So anything that is supplied as input table will enter the function in this step, in the first step, and will get transformed with all the other applied steps. So whichever table the function receives, it will first get its first row removed, then it will use that new table to promote headers upon it, and then fill down along the, all the other applied steps. This is all that needs to be done to transform the query into a function. So far there are three steps involved in creating functions. The first step is to create an initial query based on one source. The second step is to transform that query to the function with the use of the round bracket syntax. And the third step is to decide where the input variable will enter the function. After we click on done, we can see that the icon changes from query to function. And we can also see that this function receives one parameter, which is called input table, that is of a type table. And if you click on it, we can see that at the moment we only have sheet2 table inside of our query. And the last step is to invoke the function onto new data. So now let's connect to the February source. Let's go right click, new query, Excel. This time let's connect to February source. We'll connect to it. Let's call this step, let's call this query January. To make distinction, January, and let's call this one February. Okay, we need to remove these two steps because they are automatically added. Now we can go to our FX clean function, and from here we can select the February query, which is unprocessed, and we can click on invoke, and by doing that, we will state that February sales should enter as an input table. After we invoke a function, we receive a new table in which we have only one step, the source step, and if we observe the formula bar, it consists of only a single call to the function with the February sales as an input variable. If we do not want to create an additional table, like in this example, we can transform the already existing one. So we can choose the February query. We can set to insert one step after the navigation one. And then we can en encapsulate the sheet to sheet step with our fx clean 
function. It will do the same steps as in our advanced, in our function, in our advanced editor as shown in the advanced editor. Okay, now the invoke function broke, but we do not need it anymore. We can also call this step uh, with a more meaningful title. Let's call it uh, call to fx function so that we know that in this step we called called a function. After we invoke a function that does most of the cleaning, we can further adjust the query. For example, let's add an additional column with the name of the month. So let's add a column, custom column, let's call it month name. And let's write February. Let's do the same for January table. Let's add a custom column. Let's call it month. And let's write January. Okay. The last step is to append the two tables into one table. And let's do it with a uh, append as new option. Let's go to home, append queries as new, and we will append January and February as a sales table. We do not need to load January and February, so we'll disable it. And now we have a table ready to be loaded into a data model. Now, where will you be using this kind of function invoking? Most of the time, in case you need to append data coming from multiple different sources that are distributed in different locations. So, if you have the same data structure in OneDrive, SQL Server and Salesforce, you will use this option to quickly combine those files in one big table of data. In the next video, we will see how we can utilize functions even more with the invoke custom function option so this option that can simultaneously transform hundreds of different sources from the folder. So see you in the next video.